Okay, so I wanted to continue with the channeling session about the ancestors and how this soul split information is part of the ancestor information and this is gonna blow your mind for some of you. Especially if you understand that some of us come with an ancestor that walks with us. No, all of us have that. Um, a lot of people just have the guardian angel and the spirit guides, but some of us have an ancestor that decides to come with us. The ancestor might be part of the family line or an ancestor, someone that is no longer living that life in this moment now, but they mission, they might not be part of your bloodline ancestor, but the mission that you have is similar to the one they have and therefore they come to you with you as part of your ancestor, not because of the blood, but because of the mission. So there are two different ways to, to come, whether it is blood related or mission related. And that you will find only when you do a lot of meditation or if you do a lot of different type of consultations to know more about who's working with you in this in this plane at the moment. My Egum, in IFA we call it Egum, is a mission ancestor, it's not blood related. Anyways, um, and I found out in different ways. I confirmed that information in, in different ways. The reason why this is important, this is crazy, is because when I wanted to, when I did the channeling session to understand what else to pass on to you related to the ancestors, this came back again. The whole situation about the the soul splitting into A multiple times until you get to like over 500, it first goes to 64, and then I think it was like five, 540 or something like that. So let's just say eight times. This is very important because the ancestor that works with you, that is the first line of um, support, if you can call it that, in this plane, before you even, your guardian angel, because your guardian angel is always there, but cannot cannot interfere, but if you're having a goon, these goons do interfere in a way that is different than the guardian angels, which is crazy. So how did this happen? Um, the soul splits into a, the mission or blood, it doesn't matter which one it is, or it might be both, it's gonna depend on the aspect that they bring it's gonna depend on which life they have. So let's say the soul splits into A, four, five, six, seven, A. And that's an ancestor. Let's say it's an ancient ancestor because we like ancient stuff. So this, the uh, ancestor that may be coming with you, whether it is blood or mission related, it's gonna depend on which aspect of things is coming through. And one thing that is important to understand is that when you have an ancestor that is working with you, and not everybody has an ancestor that works with you, let's just be clear about that. It depends on the mission that you have for this life. Sometimes you are allowed to bring someone with you and the person sees, let's say this is you, you're the front, like let's say you're you, and then in the back you have your ancestor. So the two is like front and back. Front is you and the back is them. And when you meet, when you combine both is when you really start awakening your DNA and you start understanding your powers and you start understanding things that are beyond your wildest imagination. And remember you have your higher self so you have three, but not only that, we also have the 12th Kanta, which is the universal mind. Isn't that crazy? 
But before you get to the universal, you have to work with your higher self. And if you do having a goon, that said this is your goon, your ancestor that is walking with you, then you know your mission is even a little more crazier, if we can say that. So the aspect, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this splits many times. Let's say the split comes from the number seven for just simplicity's sake. The number seven, this Egun was, this ancestor was, I don't know, let's say he was, um, I don't know, let's just pick something. Um, he was a native Indian or he could have been, whatever, let's just say he's a native Indian. So this native Indian is part of you now. And because it's part of you, whatever pros and cons this spirit had, you're gonna have to deal with as yourself. Got it? Overcome and use those gifts and overcome the cons as yourself. When both of you merge, when both of you and your Egun become one, that's when magic starts to happen. Like real magical things start to happen. Now you wanna integrate the higher self, of course, because you have to have your higher self. So now you become three. Isn't that crazy? Before you get to the universal mind, which is 12, 12 chakra. I wanted to do it this way because it's a lot of information to understand unless I give you visuals. Let's see if, oops, no. So, here you already see the tree of life, right? Which is interesting. But the reason why this is very interesting because let's say your ancestor here had the power to talk to plants, then that means you're gonna tap into that gift easier. Gift of plant kingdom. Let's say it was a very they had a strong connection with anything natural. So anything natural, Gaia, including animals, is going to be your thing. Now, let's say your ancestor is a very, very ancient ancestor, and they were working with crystals. So that means you, in this life, are going to be the person that also works very closely with crystals because your back of you, your ancestor, was a crystal uh, worker but not only that if your ancestor because your ancestor is the sum of all of you and the future of all of you you can now go into you can now go into your circle and make your star and you place yourself in the center, right? This is you. And you say, I am here to awaken my gift. Whatever gifts you want to awaken. Let's say you today you want to work with the crystals. And then you imagine you're in the moment here and you're feeling you're being the person that already works with the crystals. And you imagine and you feel your touch. You even can smell it, you can hear, you can touch it. Oh, I did say that, you can feel it, right? And then you say, this is how it feels to be a person that already works with crystals. What are you going to do with those crystals? Who are you going to heal? What are you going to heal from yourself? What will your life be like if you already know how to work with crystals? 
and you imagine that, see it, touch it, hear. And then you say, when you're done with your meditation and intention manifestation, then you bring the energy of surrender because you know that it is done. This is the energy of the mystery, the mysterious, the occult. And then you say, amen, because you know you are the God, goddess that is creating your future. And when you say amen, you're sealing the agreement that this is what you want. And that's it. And you just meditate for as long as you can and feel the energy coming into your body. And you will start getting the downloads. They will come. So you got to pay attention about that that you saw, that you experienced in this moment. And that's really how you work with the power of intention. Let me see if, it's, if you can see that better. That's the power of the intention right there. I hope that makes sense. This is powerful stuff. So you can go through this process several times. Let's say it's not only crystal. Now you wanna come, do one at a time, please. Now you wanna come and work with plants or animals or light beings, etc. You can do all of that. It's up to you. It really is up to you. Now, the main thing here is that the ancestors that are earthy ancestors are the ones that are going to come with you. Sometimes you do have light beings that volunteer to be part of your soul group as you hire yourself, but they don't mess with the earthy ancestor because they have different functions. The function of the earthy ancestor is to give you the mysteries of the earth how to work in the earth planet. And the light beings are universal. So don't get messed up with the, just know this is earth, earthy ancestors and the light beings are for anything cosmic, okay? So the ancestor that comes with you to experience life here might be a light being but they're bringing the energy of when they were reborn, when they were incarnated on planet Earth. Okay, so it's two different things. Um, as the higher self, some people have more than than three, four, five, six, seven, eight higher self. They might have a group as light beings of part of the higher self, which is different. The higher self is different than the ancestor that is working with you if you have one. Know everybody has an ancestor that is working with you. Again, the blood-related ancestor, or it could be mission-related ancestor. Let's say, for example, that you have a mission similar to Jesus. You're gonna, you might come with a person that was previously um, imprinted with the energy of Jesus. So they experience things like Jesus did because they need to bring those memories in. And now they might come to you as an ancestor, whether blood or mission related. Doesn't mean it was Jesus. It just means that they were imprinted with that memory before when they were alive here. And now they can come support you because you have a similar mission. So we see a lot of Jesuses in quantum healing, Mary Magdalene. What it means is a lot of people are being imprinted with that energy um, because that's what we need right now for this life. And remember, there are parallel universes too. So all of these plays a big part into who comes with you and for what purpose. So it depends on your mission. And if you have a blood related, um, an Egun ancestor, um, they also have to be part of your mission um, because you don't bring a blood relative ancestor for no, like they have to be in sync with your mission. But sometimes you have mission ancestors that are not part of your bloodline, but they are agreed to come with you because they had a similar mission. So it doesn't have to be just by blood. I hope that makes sense, and I'm gonna leave it here for now and I'll see you guys on the next one.